Welcome to the FWAT Show. I'm Rob Steele. That's Jesus Jones in the background, and it's time for your irregularly scheduled program that is most reassuring in its claim that this is the show that lets you know that if it feels as if the world has lost its mind, it's not just you. It has. I'd like to start with an apology. Because, well me, Jerry Jones not only reversed his decision not to let his team kneel during the anthem, he went on the field and did it with them. They even won. Of course, it was against the Cardinals, so I'm not sure that counts. Uh, The U.S. Army football team took a knee. Wonder what that means about their patriotism. Hmm, far army. Hmm, let us think. Remember, It's okay for Tim Tebow to do it because he's Christian, but if Colin Kaepernick does it because, you know, he's black, no, that's not it. He's doing it for, uh, what is it, to ease racial tension and to stop cops from beating the crap out of people for no particular reason? Yeah, that's, uh, that must be racist or anti-American or, you know, something Christ himself would have done. Yeah, that's it. But, uh, you know, there's a big reason why Donald Trump really is going after the NFL on this, and it has nothing to do with the flag, and I doubt it actually has anything to do with people with skin color that's different than his. Of course, outside the Oompa Loompas, I can't think of many people who are orange. No, I'm pretty sure it goes back to 1990 when he was part of something called the USFL, and he sued the NFL... And he got about $4 million out of it. But he also got a lifetime ban from the NFL, meaning he can no longer own a team in the NFL. Like he wants to, but he can't. Aww. Well, that would explain why he's being really rather petty about it. And that's the only way I can work in the sad passing of Tom Petty into the show this week. Sorry, that both things suck. Anyway... Sports Illustrated still exists. I mean, no, um, what was I going for here? Sports Illustrated did a cover story on this whole flag kneeling thing. And lots of athletes ended up on the cover of this issue, like LeBron James and Stephen Curry, who had the whole we're not going to the White House because Trump sucks uh, thing going on. Green Bay quarterback Aaron Rodgers is in the background for some reason. And NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell is on the cover. And there are several other people that I don't recognize, but I did notice someone who was missing from the cover of this issue. Colin f***ing Kaepernick. How can you leave the guy who started this shit storm off the cover of the issue that has the big article about the shit storm? Seriously. But, you know, something I've brought up before, if you're kneeling for the national anthem... Somehow, that is considered taking the First Amendment too far, as opposed to the Second Amendment, because the Second Amendment is a price we must all pay for freedom. Like what happened in Vegas this week, where some ass clown got a gun and shot way too many people because, um, he's a dick. Okay, you give me a reason. Uh, The best quote I've heard from this is from Barack Obama, who... God, I wish he was still president. Anyway, he said the people in Las Vegas need a lot more than thoughts and prayers. Hello? I've been saying that for most of my life, really. But the GOP response to this is that the gun is a right, whereas the medical treatment for the 500-plus people who got shot in this issue, that's a privilege. Except it isn't. It's also a right, because we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You remember that? You've heard that before. If you've been shot, you likely don't have a life. Or if you do, you don't really have liberty because you're stuck in a hospital bed, which makes pursuing happiness a real pain in the ass. There. Use that. There's your argument. That's in the Declaration of Independence. And if we don't get it, then frankly, Congress, you shouldn't get it either. I mean, Congress and the other bodies of so-called leaders need to be on the same health care and pay scale as Americans. I'm tired of living in a country where we've written more legislature on what you can do with a uterus 
which is something that gives lives, than a gun, which is something that can do very little other than take lives. Now, if you're saying, but Rob, there are other unregulated weapons like knives out there. Well, how's this? When a 60-something-year-old white guy kills almost 60 people and wounds over 500 from about, what, a thousand feet away with a knife? I'll be with you on knife control. All the way, 100%. Until then, let's put it another way. You say that guns don't kill people, people kill people. Well, what was Trump's second bill he signed into law? Yeah, uh, wasn't it that one that allowed people with severe mental illness to buy guns? And in keeping with that logic, why should we care if Kim Jong-un gets a nuke? Because nukes don't kill people. People who have their finger on the launch button kill people. Did that make it any better for you? How's this? In Vegas, there was a guitarist named Caleb Keeter. I'm not making the name up. He was pro-gun. But now he says, I cannot express how wrong I was. We need gun control now. That's a quote. He said he and his bandmates who were there for this concert were also armed so they could be the good guys with guns in case something happened. Well, look how utterly useless these pistols are against a guy with a rifle at range. And now, now they're trying to pass a pro-silencer law. Are you f***ing kidding me? But that's not the only issue we've got going on in the country. No, of course, because why stop at just one? This is like potato chips. We need to have multiple issues all going on all at once just to be annoying. A lot of people have forgotten that Puerto Rico got hit with three once-in-a-lifetime hurricanes. Apparently, these are very short lifetimes because that's not supposed to happen. Climate change. Hmm. Anyway, what did Donald Trump do about this? Be oh, oh, that's right. Why is Donald Trump supposed to do something about this? Because Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens. Did you guys forget about that? Did everyone forget about that? Puerto Rico is essentially, and has been, I think pretty much in my entire lifetime, the 51st state. And the only reason I'm glad they haven't made it a state yet is because that would mean we'd have to change the flag again and spend billions of dollars putting an extra star somewhere. Other than that, yeah, let's just make it a state and get it official. Anywho, Donald Trump, in a series of tweets that you can look up, I'm not going to read them, they're out there and easy to find. He's blaming Puerto Rico for the issues they're in. Oh, they're broke. Well, it may have something to do with you declaring a, what, $11 billion bankruptcy and taking all that money for yourself? No, no, that can't have anything to do with it. He's kind of upset that they didn't just pick up the island and move it after the first hurricane. Because that's what he would have done, apparently. How the hell did this guy get put in this position? He then goes on to make fun of San Juan Mayor Carmen Yulin Cruz, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name, for actually getting out there and wading through waist-high water to find survivors. That's what she did. Got out and actually f***ing helped. As opposed to Donald Trump, who has much bigger balls than she does, because he went golfing. I'm not sure how that works. It, it doesn't make any sense. Then he goes on to say, Oh, we're going to have trouble delivering relief to Puerto Rico because Puerto Rico is an island and is surrounded by water. Ready? Ready? Here's some quotes. And remember... This is Yosemite Trump we're talking about here. We've gotten A-pluses on Texas and Florida, and we will also on Puerto Rico. But the difference is, this is an island sitting in the middle of the ocean. It's a big ocean. It's a very big ocean. And we're doing a really good job. And this isn't like Florida, where you can go right up the spine, or like Texas, where we can go right down the middle and we distribute. This is a thing called the Atlantic Ocean Varmint. This is tough stuff. F***ing seriously? Put it on a boat, ass clown. Oh, I'm sorry, the Jones Act is in the way? That stupid law that's still on the books that was supposed to help out shipping back in the early 1900s? I'll give him this. He did suspend it. After a week? I mean, there are some laws we should get rid of. Did you know it's still illegal to race riverboats on the Mississippi? Or have an ice cream cone in your back pocket on a Sunday in Alabama? Why the hell was that a law in the first place? I don't know. Incidentally, Elon Musk, 
You remember him? The guy who runs the Tesla company? Shipped three and a half million power walls, which are basically big solar-powered batteries. He shipped those to Puerto Rico on his own dime to restore power to those who lost it. What did Trump do? Trump went to Puerto Rico, I'm sure to try to play golf, and went, oh, I can't see the tea, it's underwater. Hello? His version of help was throwing rolls of paper towels at people. I'm not making that up. Look for the video. He also told the Puerto Ricans that the U.S. can't help too much because, <clears throat> quote, you've thrown our budget out of whack. Like they did this to themselves. It's global climate change that did this. It could have been, well, okay, maybe not prevented, but considerably lessened. But you don't believe in it. So you send thoughts, prayers, and paper towels to hurricane victims. Because for some reason in his head, that makes sense. Dear Republicans, where is the furor over Jared Kushner's emails? All of you seem to have a collective cow when Hillary Clinton used a private email server, much in the same way Colin Powell and Condoleezza Rice used. But this is Jared Kushner. He is Trump's son-in-law and serves in the current nepotistic regime. And he is using private email servers for White House business. Shouldn't you be shitting Twinkies about now? Signed, The Rest of the planet. Here's some disturbing news about a couple of schools. There's a kid named Sidney Fisk who graduated from the Delta County School District in Colorado in 2016, who had a great GPA. She was the captain of her speech and debate team, the student body treasurer, and vocal about her opinions. But she was discriminated against, not because she's black, not because she's a lesbian, but because she said she's an atheist. Why should that even be a thing? Isn't that First Amendment there to protect everyone's freedom of religion? And shouldn't that mean that you're free to not have one? Instead, she was bombarded with stories of Christian faith and how everyone should attend church in classes from the teachers. Now, I understand having a conversation with someone like, hey, this happened at church yesterday, ba da ba da ba da ba da That makes sense. But if it's a, you should be in church like I was yesterday, no, no. Because even if they are Christian just like you, they may just go to a separate branch than you do. Have you thought about that? No. So she's suing to cover the medical treatment, including hospitalization, to get psychological attention because she was bombarded with so much crap, it gave her anxiety attacks and an anxiety disorder. Is that really the Christian way of doing things? Of course, that's not the only school news we've got this week. This one is, uh, this one's really, really weird. There are several school districts in Southern California who were given homemade flutes for music classes. Now, that sounds like it would be a cool thing, right? They were distributed on behalf of a nonprofit music program called Flutes Across the World. Now, you see, that sounds cool, right? Except some of the flutes had an unusual substance in them, which was discovered to be semen. Yeah, not guys in a submarine from the Navy. No, the other kind. I mean, let's face it, if it was the guys from the Navy, those flutes would have to be huge. No. Now, no one has been able to figure out who put that there yet. Flutes around the world says it wasn't them. I can't say that I blame them for saying it wasn't them. And frankly, I kind of hope it wasn't them. It's been a good organization so far, and we could use more music, even if it is for a flute. If you have any questions or answers or any other comments about this show, contact me through the website, thefwatchshow.com. Use the buttons for Facebook and Twitter and they're all there. I think you can even find my email on the website. Even if you can't, it's rob at thefwatshow.com. How hard is that? Send me comments, send me questions, send me answers. You can even go to the FWAT shop because such a thing exists and get t-shirts and hats or even color-changing coffee mugs. It all goes to support the entire Coil Entertainment Network. And you get clothes or coffee mug. I think that's a fair trade. And if you don't, 
please subscribe to the show and send it around to your friends and your family. Let everyone hear the really weird things that go on on this planet. And I'm going to end this particular episode with a story that is absolutely untrue. Earlier this week, a seven-year-old boy was at the center of a Knoxville, Tennessee courtroom drama when he challenged a court ruling over who should have custody of him. The boy has a history of being beaten by his parents, and the judge initially awarded custody to his aunt, in keeping with the child custody law and regulation requiring that family unity be maintained to the highest possible degree. The boy surprised the court when he proclaimed that his aunt beat him more than his parents, and he adamantly refused to live with her. When the judge suggested that he live with his grandparents, the boy said the same thing. After considering the remainder of the immediate family and learning that domestic violence was apparently a way of life among them, the judge took the unprecedented step of allowing the boy to propose who should have custody of him. After two recesses to check legal references and confer with the child welfare officials, the judge granted temporary custody of the boy to the University of Tennessee volunteer football team, who the boy firmly believes are not capable of beating anyone. Yeah, that story wasn't real, Don. That was fake news. That's called a joke. What isn't a joke is the number of Americans killed on battlefields in all wars through the U.S. history coming to a total of 1.4 million in the history of U.S. wars. History of U.S. wars. Yes, I said it repeatedly, so it sinks in because the number of Americans killed by firearms in the United States since 1968 is over one and a half million. So don't call it the war on guns. The war is already here, and we've been fighting it for almost 50 years now. Can we get rid of this shit, please? I'll be back. Until then, be afraid, because, wow, it's really getting worse out there. <laughs>